So it's June 8th. I think I'm going to get death threats. Let me tell you a story about how insane TikTok is. Two different people can have the same app, but yet have completely different homepages. You may see dancing videos, you may see music covers, you may see the best cover arts ever made. Whatever it is, we all see something different. However, something that unites all of TikTok is rage. Some random guy said the most racist thing you'll ever hear in your life, people will call him out. Some guy made a hilariously tone deaf song about children being murdered in their schools. That happened three weeks ago and I still see people dunking on him to this day including me, or someone just made some frankly cringy content, TikTok will come out in spades to make videos joking about the bad content or even the person themselves. You know that thing where people light themselves on fire in protest? I'm gonna find this guy and do that in front of him. Now this happens frequently to a group of online content creators known as PNG tubers, meaning a video creator who uses a PNG of a character to identify themselves online. This label can apply to content creators like Jellybean, Frostfox, Red Velvety, or maybe more broadly to content creators like Dream, Corpse, and Blackie Speaks. Those those last three might not fit in this label in the traditional sense, but I'd argue if one solo image is how you can identify them and they don't show their face, I think they fall under this category. Back to what I was on about. Jellybean is a PNG tuber who has faced a lot of criticism from the internet. People have called it very cringe, some of her jokes don't land, uh, and really just the style of content rubs some people off the wrong way. This has led to a whole genre of hate towards their content. I'd argue the most prolific is this skeleton meme, with these skeletons basically cutting off everything they say to just make a joke, mostly POV, fatherless. I'm not exaggerating, that's how most of them go. And then TikTok started making fun of the people who made those videos. Do you prefer chocolate pizza or jelly bean pizza? Jelly bean Now whatever your opinion is on Jelly Bean's content or even the PNG tuber community as a whole is irrelevant because no matter how bad you think their content is and how you keep saying nothing can be worse than that, I made worse. This is the story of how I became a PNG tuber. So here's my goal. Over the course of two weeks, I'm going to become the world's worst PNG tuber, and my goal is to either get this account to 5,000 followers, get one video to 50,000 views, or receive death threats. Yes, that's a legitimate completion goal. <laughs> I'm gonna be releasing the videos on TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and Instagram Reels, all in which to see which one breeds the most hate and vitriol, and also which one is the best one to upload your content to. I'm going to be making seven videos with all of them engineered to be as cringy as possible, as rage-inducing as possible, and as truly terrible as they all possibly can be. But before I make these videos, how am I gonna sound? But before I can make these videos, Cyanide's Mac and Cheese Party 2 is happening July 21st, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's an hour and a half live stream where we all eat mac and cheese, and we celebrate the release of my album coming out July 22nd. You can pre-save it by the first link in the description. It's going to be a great time. Everyone stop on by. But enough about that. How am I going to sound in this experiment? So my original plan was that I was going to pitch up my voice because I've done that before, and I know how to do format shifting. Every day I sink deeper into my abyss. The problem is... That sounds good for singing, not talking. <laughs> Plus my idea of making me an annoyingly flamboyant personality was not hitting right. So I decided, okay, I'll pitch my voice down. That just made me sound like a drunk demon. I'll create some AR generated pickup line. So after neither of my two options worked, which made me want to cry, I decided to try to do something I saw Corridor Digital doing on their own channel. They were playing with this voice deepfake software. Essentially what this means is that you would speak a sentence and then a celebrity's voice would dub over what you said in your speech pattern. It sounds cool, but is also extremely terrifying so i tried signing up for this program so i could use it and i think past me describes it pretty well i looked at the pricing plans and oh my god so i was really stressed about what i was gonna do because pitching up didn't sound good pitching down didn't sound good and i couldn't even do an ai deep fake because i don't have that money i'm in ohio so i was extremely stressed about what i was gonna do but then i realized my ace in the hole I'm not famous at all. <laughs> I can just use my normal voice and dialect to get away with this, albeit doing my British accent, which is really bad. However, I found out that pitching it down a little bit doesn't sound too bad. So we finally have my voice. And I'm glad it worked, although for the first month I was working on this, I literally could not listen to the videos without tearing up, which is what I do when I'm extremely embarrassed. So there's that. <laughs> So it's now the most important part of this preparation phase. What is my PNG tuber gonna look like? Luckily for me, I have the perfect design for this experiment, and that's a character from one of my D&D campaigns. He's this gray bird named Mercury, and he looks cool, so I figured if it ain't broke. So now that I have my character, 
Who am I going to commission? I considered some of my art friends at the time, but however, this was a surprise character for a campaign we were all in together, so I scratched them off the list. I also considered my good friend Serexa, who does all my album art, but however, they drew the original art for Mercury, so I was not about to ask them again. So being desperate and out of immediate options, I turned to commissioning someone random. So I went scouring through the internet, and I remember this TikTok I got on my For You page when I first downloaded the app because I liked one FNAF post, and the algorithm was like, this guy only likes FNAF. So after seeing that TikTok again, I went to their Insta and realized they had commissions open, which was perfect. And I reached out to them with my insane idea. I really gave her an Arby's meat mountain of a Google Doc that covered every inch of this batshit idea. And luckily for me, she said yes. And after two days, they finished all the images and made them so good that I still can't forgive myself for what I'm about to do to all these images. So I'd just like to give a big thank you to Allison. And I'd also like to give a big apology for how I'm ruining your art. So now that I've got the images, it's time to start conceiving the worst possible TikToks. So I started brainstorming some ideas for what I could cover and what tropes of the genre I should hit on. Now I had these five video topic ideas that I wanted to implement. I unfortunately didn't do the last two even though they would be objectively hilarious. And while reading your comments is a staple of the genre, I didn't want to do it because I wanted to separate myself from the pack. I also forgot. So I decided upon AI generated pickup lines, Minecraft hardcore, and getting every single fact about a video game wrong. So in April, I started making the first two videos and I have never fought harder in my life to continue doing something. Purposely putting all my skills and energy as a video editor into the worst possible thing ever was draining, but also so worth it. <laughs> so the first video I finished was AI generated pickup lines and I'll let you be the judge of how good it is. So if you don't know, I'm a programmer and I love playing with AI, especially AI generated stuff. And I thought it'd be fun to AI generate some pickup lines. Here's what I came up with. Are you from Tennessee? Cause I've been living here for 15 years. What'd you think? You didn't like it? But I worked so hard on it. So that's a truly awful video and I'm so proud of it. So it's time to move on to the next one. Minecraft hardcore was a special video for me because I got my roommate Owen to voice act in it as a guy who loses his Minecraft hardcore world live on stream. Owen's playing a streamer named Zoo Society and that streamer literally doesn't exist. It was just two words on Owen's hoodie that I mashed up together. Despite the man he was portraying literally not existing, he put his all into this character. Just look at him go. This, this lava pool here. Fuck, 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 dude, what the fuck? Oh, shit. Damn, bro. <laughs> That's gonna be worth at least one Emmy. So having these two videos finished really set in stone how awful of an idea this was, but that did not matter to me. I was having so much fun making these. <laughs> and now for the meat and potatoes of this account. The video game facts. None of them are interesting. Some of them aren't even true. <laughs> My account is literally going to be the definition of misinformation. <laughs> I also point out why some of these scripts and facts are so outlandish. The creator of Fortnite of Freddy, Scott Cawthon, started making the game because he was working as a police officer and needed something to do during the day. That's because I didn't write them. AI did. I used a program called Novel AI, which is an AI text generating program that generates like fantasy stories. It's used for stuff like Dungeons and Dragons, fantasy stuff, and what I use used to do my mandatory discussion boards in my English class at college. So how I would write one of these videos is I would start off with a paragraph intro that would really introduce the AI of what I was trying to hit on. Hey, editing Tony here to leave a note. Um, every single one of these video game fact videos would start with this horrible sound bite that my sister recorded. Let me know which one shocked you the most. I didn't know that. I'm not exaggerating. Almost all of them start with this. I didn't Anyways, I'll let previous Tony continue. And then I would let AI run wild with the facts. And then at the very end, I would come up with a very short conclusion to wrap it all up. Wash, rinse, repeat for all videos. <laughs> so as I was working on these videos, I wanted to get a few second opinions. So I made sure to show them to all my friends. I've edited one of these videos and I'm gonna show Owen who's leaving for Atlanta. Uh, do you have anything to say to Atlanta? Hey. <laughs> He's shy. You guys excited? Yeah. yeah. Especially AI generated stuff. Second to none. Love y'all. Stay positive. He'll bring his own charm. Darth Maul to Darth Sidious. <laughs> <laughs> he lost it. Oh. There's like no content. Exactly. Yeah, it's just like it's just saying things for the sake of saying. <laughs> Angie, what did you think of the TikToks? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Out of ten, what would you give it? Like. For replicating what it is, like a 10, like content-wise, it's like a zero. <laughs>
So it's safe to say they all loved it. So after getting a few more of these videos finished, I had seven total to release, one per day, and I was feeling optimistic, but I really needed to strategize my release schedule, so I did. Whoa, this part was too long, so I'll just summarize. My seven videos made, I decided on dropping the video game facts videos on days one, three, five, and seven, and the other three miscellaneous videos on alternating days two, four, and six. Now with the experiment starting today on Wednesday, I was very optimistic, believing that the experiment was gonna go stupid viral on TikTok. Now despite my optimism, I still had what I was calling plan B in case for whatever reason the experiment wasn't going well. Now what is plan B? I literally have no idea at this point in the experiment because why plan for plan B when you've already planned so much for plan A, am I right? Now with that terrible piece of advice out of the way, let's get into week one of this experiment on TikTok. So I started this experiment off in high spirits and had my seven videos set and ready. So I sent the Undertale Facts video out to TikTok and was ready to count my hundreds of views. And I waited. And I kept waiting. And I waited some more. And I was feeling very confused because even my first TikTok on my own account, I got at least 100 views. I know the way to post to make sure it hits. Why is it not working? And then I remembered something that my roommate John brought up to me once, which is that if you make an account on TikTok and then don't upload for a certain threshold, the app marks you as a viewer instead of a content creator, and it doesn't recommend anything you push out. Now, this could be complete lies, but I wasn't about to fact check. It was working. And I was like, oh yeah, that's why I have zero views. <laughs> I made the account in April. And it's currently the end of June. <laughs> so I just deleted the account and said goodbye to yeah, Mercury and became Mercury Theory. So I was like, okay, finally, the video will do better, right? Wrong. The video wasn't being pushed out at all. And I was like, that's weird. I literally just made the account. It should at least push it out to like five viewers, right? So I was making all these videos as long facts, which are over a minute long. And I get why someone's attention span wouldn't stick around for the full thing. So I was like, okay, I'll just make something called one fact. Here's an example of one. Did you know that in Minecraft, you can theoretically beat the entire game from just one grass block? I didn't know that. That's the entire video. I'm serious. That was it. <laughs> I can already hear the outrage. <laughs> so I proceeded to make 10 more of these. My favorite one being this one. Did you know that in the game franchise, The Legend of Zelda, the main character actually isn't named Zelda. It's actually a guy named Link. I didn't know that. No shit. <laughs> if this doesn't scream that this is fake immediately, the standards for PNG tubers are so low. <laughs> so these short form videos will surely do better, right? Nope. <laughs> well, it's day two and the highest viewed video has five views, which are solely from me and my sister. And she made an account just to like it. And then she deleted the app altogether. <laughs> so because I wasn't about to have essentially three months of prep time go out the window, I decided to finally initiate plan B. So after asking very suspiciously in my Discord server if anyone wanted to help out with a video, I let them all in on my little plan. Ignore the thing in the top left. This is a very good business meeting. Day two, uh, we've actually had a break in the experiment because we have one video with 256 views. That's not what I expected though. We need more. So I'm totally not staging a coup. Everyone say hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Basically what I'm doing is I'm telling them to share the videos with their friends and under the guise of, I found this on my For You page and this is the worst thing I've ever seen, which will spark outrage in their friends. Then those friends will share it to their friends and then the algorithm will wake up and push my videos out there. Oh no, Tony, but you're gonna ruin the scientific data by artificially increasing interaction, which is gonna skew the results in your favorite conclusion. Okay, Mr. Scientist. My reasoning for allowing this is that it's my video, cry about it. And also I need to kickstart this puppy somehow how which has got to be the worst metaphor I've ever used in my life. So after the world premiere of Mercury Theory to my excited recruits- And number 10, most of the characters look pretty cute, but there are a few weird ones that don't really fit the aesthetic. First of all, one of your facts that you list isn't even a fact. It's completely subjective if you think the characters are cute or not. <laughs> I set my sleeper agents off to do their missions. So after a day went by, the responses I was seeing from the sleeper agents' friends were hilarious to me. This person said they hate me. This person blocked me, claiming that the content was annoying, preying on kids' shit. And even Jack from the 5 Minute Podcast got bamboozled by our mutual friend Brett when he sent this with the caption, Fun facts, to which Jack responded, They aren't fun. <laughs> Other than that, day three has been significantly better for the experiment because of the coup. I mean, plan B. 
Plan B. I'll just let previous Tony explain it. So it is halfway through day three and we have a break in the case. <laughs> However, I uploaded like an hour or two ago my Legend of Zelda fact. That has actually done pretty all right. That's 617 views. So we're getting there. 25 likes and six comments. Um, but everyone else is like, is this a joke, bro? Wow, really four flushed emojis. This has to be bait or something. And Zelda is a boy and you play as him. So we're already doing a little better. Guys, alert. Alert, alert, we have a break in the case. A VTuber with 20K followers followed me. And they even commented saying, I have pretty good videos. I still don't know if that's satire, <laughs> but I didn't want to freak out too much and break character. So I just responded how I think Mercury would. Cheers! <laughs> Do you know how British people talk? <laughs> so as week one progressed and I realized that the results were not that impressive, everyone kept saying that YouTube shorts was probably the way to go with these. I admittedly thought TikTok was going to be the best because I sincerely believe that the TikTok algorithm could get any content out there to the right audience. It's not like we had nothing though. The FNAF one fact I made uh, had 7,000 views, which is pretty good. Nowhere near 50,000 though. <laughs> but there's one day left in this experiment and let's see what happens. Well, 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 if the last day of the TikTok side of this wasn't explosive. Um, I just posted a TikTok last night that got 600,000 views, which is insane. That's huge. It's getting so many likes, so many comments. The problem is I uploaded that on my own TikTok, not the one for this experiment. I literally proved I can go viral on the wrong account. Fuck. So we've officially hit the end of week one and the results are uneventful. <laughs> but hey, we still have one week left in this experiment. Let's see if week two is any better. Now YouTube Shorts started off immediately better because I could schedule all the videos in advance. So the first day I just scheduled all the videos to come out, it was great. I re-edited some of the longer ones because YouTube Shorts can be a max 60 seconds. So I only had to worry about documenting the results, which is pretty great. Unlike Instagram Reels, which is the worst thing I've ever had to deal with in my entire life, and I had to watch my 18-year-old cat eat herself in the last year of her life. I would rather watch that again. Instagram Reels is a frustrating process product that I hate with every fiber of my being. Because you can't upload reels from desktop, you have to upload it from your phone. That wouldn't be too bad if I was doing simple videos, but no, I edited these on my laptop and I needed to transfer them. Bad news for me because I have a Lenovo Legion laptop and an iPhone and I swear to God, these two got divorced because they don't want to talk to each other. So wanting to avoid that headache, I tried to post reels to desktop extender for Chrome, but it had the audacity to only offer me two free reels before I had to pay $9.99 a month to get unlimited free reels. Who the fuck do you think you are? It doesn't even work. So I had to do Google Drive. So once you get your footage onto your phone, good luck with that because reels will sometimes refuse to upload your videos. I swear to God, it took me two hours to get the Elden Ring TikTok up. And this is how it finally posted. Elden Ring is an expansive and beautiful addition to the dock. Elden Ring is an expansive and beautiful addition to the dock. I'm not even kidding. It turned my one minute and 40 second video into a 2.5 second video that's corrupt. <laughs> so I hate reels enough to the point that I literally just skipped days of uploading because I did not want to deal with it. Not to mention, no one was watching these videos, so the effort wasn't even worth it. Oh no, that's a bit of a lie. The videos had five views from my mom and my sister. <laughs> Shout out them, they're the real heroes of this experiment. Not to mention, YouTube Shorts was doing significantly better. I actually think it was a great double-edged sword because YouTube Shorts was being recommended to PNG Tuber haters left and right who were leaving comments on it, and then that led to PNG Tuber defenders all being in the comments trying to defend me even responding to the haters, it was great. Both sides were in a never ending battle and I was not responding to any of them because I thought it was even funnier to do that. And it was also important to know that both sides have the worst spelling mistakes possible. Someone wrote a very beautiful and prophetic comment, which is, oh, well, would you look at that? Another PNG tuber getting replies, vomiting emoji. <laughs> at least he not a foxry.
at least I'm not this. <laughs> I knew that a year ago. They had six words and they misspelled two of them. Bruh, did you just say, did you know in Fortnite's of Freddy's? Did you know that in Fortnite's of Freddy's? Oh, wow. It's not like everyone played the fucking game already and knew. <laughs> and then on the Red Dead Redemption 2 fact, which is one of my favorite videos, I'll play it right now. Did you know that in Red Dead Redemption 2, Arthur Morgan is actually based off of Teddy Roosevelt, due to them both being good horseback riders and existing around the same era? I didn't know that. That is just not even remotely true, by the way. Squeaky ass, goofy, ah, uh, PNG tuber, go make good content. What part of my voice is squeaky? <laughs> I won't deny I'm goofy, ob. Uh, <laughs> Bro, skull emoji. How many people were good horseback rider and lived from the end of the 19th century to the start of the 20th century? Arthur Morgan and Teddy Roosevelt, of course. Come on. Someone just wrote on the, uh, did you know this about Elden Ring fact? Cool. <laughs> and then they went to the Undertale fact and wrote, no, that's crazy. <laughs> And then everyone started tagging this YouTuber named Vince Ka, who seems to be the villain of the PNG tuber community, except his superpower seems to be making a thousand daily videos on Jelly Bean. For the first few videos, my sister and my mom were blending in as the comments trying to spark engagement and no one was joining them. However, my favorite comment that either of them left was super cool. Robin William loved this game. And I just responded, truly magnificent. <laughs> and my sister writes, uh, wait, you're telling me I played all of Breath of the Wild and had all the main characters names mixed up? That's gotta be a feat. <laughs> and then I made the Harry Styles one and that finally got some interaction. The comments like, didn't ask. I didn't know Harry was a twin. Two school emojis. Are you a real bird? Furry. None of these facts are even slightly interesting. And you're a PNG tuber, so I hate you. Alex writes, they're called creepers, not creepiest, you absolute troglodyte. And then my favorite interaction ever comes here. Chicago Kathy writes, ugh, another PNG tuber. Ugh, another sad loser that has no reason to hate on people only because he has self-doubt about their own life and problems. Worry about yourself before others. And then Kathy claps back with, oh, so you go after me, but not the person that called them a troglodyte. Real good judgment there, buddy. Go after the one that's objectively causing less harm in the situation. Also, sad? Loser? Really? Kindergartners can probably come up with better insults that would hurt more than sad loser. And I get that I played right into your little mind game. That's all you wanted, right? A response. You wanted to see me get mad. Well, I can say that I'm not mad, but it said I'm disappointed. Disappointed that you think I'm a sad... <laughs> disappointed that you think I'm a sad loser when you're the one butting into another's thoughts when you have no reason to. I don't like PNG tubers. A whole bunch of people don't like PNG tubers, so clearly I'm not alone. And then the original person responds back, lol. <laughs> Finally on this video though, July 4th, we officially succeeded at the experiment. Oh, why did I pass on July 4th? Uh, did I hit 5,000 followers? No, my Instagram account still has 27 <laughs> and no signs of moving forward. Uh, did I hit 50,000 views? Uh, my video hit the algorithm, right? Uh, no. My video hit 6,000. So if I didn't hit either of those two requirements, how did I succeed at the challenge? This comment right here. <laughs> Let's go! 10 likes! I got a death threat! I got someone telling me to kill myself! Let's go! You have no idea how happy I was to see that comment in my inbox because that means I succeeded at this experiment two days before the deadline, July 6th. I have never been more excited in my life to see a comment like this. I also learned that Instagram Reels is a completely different breed when it comes to hatred. And I also hate Reels with a burning passion. Every video on there sucks. They all suck. Every single one of them, they're all terrible. So now that we've hit the end of this experiment, it's time to tally up our data and see which platform is the best for generating hate and also which one is the best one for you to upload on. All right, it's time to tally up the results from the three different apps and see which one is the best. So starting off with the week of June 22nd to 28th, uh, TikTok, the max followers I hit was 155 and the videos with the highest amount of views ended up with 8,555 views and a total number of likes, 1,328 over the entire project. That's not too bad for my very first week. However, uh, what was bad for my very first week is that only two videos surpassed 1,000 views out of the 18 I posted. Two out of 18, that is a terrible number. That is 11% of videos only hitting that. Which, when you put it that way, it's not terrible. It's not great. And the video that had the most interaction was the Zelda TikTok. Moving on to the second week, which is Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts. We're going to start off with Instagram Reels. So Instagram Reels performed the worst in a few categories, but didn't perform terribly in all of them. Like a followers was easily the worst with ending off with uh, 27. Uh, it's currently down to 26, but I'm just rounded it up to 27 because both numbers are terrible. The video with the highest amount of views ended up with 6,169 views. Nice. And the total number 
number of likes I got over the entire project was 537. That might sound terrible, but I only uploaded nine videos to this app instead of 18. So if we do theoretical probability of times in that by two, I have a theoretical number of 1,074 likes. Still not perfect, but at least it's four digits. However, out of the nine videos I posted, five of them hit over 1,000 views, which is pretty good, which that is 55% of my videos getting over 1,000. That's not too bad. That's not a bad percentage. And the video most interacted with was the Harry Styles one. Uh, and then finally, YouTube Shorts. While it only has the best number in one of these categories, I would still argue that YouTube Shorts did the best out of every single platform here. After a week of posting, I ended up with 119 subscribers, which is honestly not too bad. My highest view video had 3,046 views. While that may sound bad and is technically the worst performing out of uh, the three apps, I would argue that's honestly pretty good because out of the 18 videos I posted, 12 of them hit over a thousand views. So even though I might not get like videos with like 6,000, 8,000. I would rather take this because I'm consistently getting 2,000, 3,000 easy. I would wholeheartedly trust that statistic more than one video that performed well and then everything else has under 100 views. And then the total number of likes YouTube Studio told me I had was 944. I don't know if that includes dislikes, which I got a lot of, but if YouTube did the number right, uh, 944, very close to 1,000, that's pretty good. And then the video most interacted with was the Zelda TikTok. So what is my final conclusion? conclusion with the data I've gathered. I rambled with an actual conclusion for too long, so I'll just summarize and say that the week I dedicated to each platform is just one week out of 52 possible ones. Just because this worked here and the other didn't work there doesn't speak for if I did this experiment for a full month or even a year. Despite that, I am still impressed by my findings and the fact that TikTok didn't completely run away with this experiment. And one last thing I will add at the end of this dumb little experiment that has taken three months of my life to complete is that if you have ever wanted to do something but have felt scared, nervous, or even unsure if you should do it, just do it. You have literally nothing to lose by starting, because if you don't start it, you will never know what could have been, and even if it doesn't work out, at least you did it. That's why I became a PNG tuber, because if I didn't do it, who the hell else would because this was such a dumb experiment to do, oh my god. Uh, before I wrap this video up, I do have an album coming out July 22nd. You can pre-save it, link at the top of the description. If you want a little teaser, here's every song played at once. Thank you. I have a live stream coming up called Cyanide's Mac and Cheese Party 2. It's gonna be the sequel to the first Mac and Cheese Party, which was so much fun. You can also join in on the fun by submitting a video of yourself with the hashtag Cyanide Mac and Cheese Party. If you're wondering how to submit, there's some rules on screen, but too long didn't read. Film yourself saying the hashtag or have it big on screen and make sure Mac and Cheese is prevalent, at least somewhat in your submission. I'll compile the best ones into a segment during the live stream and make sure to be there July 21st, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And now for the people who have somehow stuck around, thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and help me on my quest to go from underrated to just rated. And also don't forget to politely press that like button as it's been obliterated too many times. There'll be some videos that pop up by my head because if you like this video, you'll certainly like those. I hope you have a great day. If Filion comes out July 22nd and I'll see you around next time. Bye. I've been going round in circles, but I think That's just the entire thing. That's the entire video!